Yes, yes, another video about free speech. It is a very important topic, though. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. I've always associated music with free speech. All the songs, all the sentiments, all the artful ways in which artists portray their verbal and musical creations, sometimes ironically and oppositely, to make one think and feel, or in most cases, for some fun and escapism. Sometimes to portray how they see that part of history that they're witnessing at the time. Lately, I've noticed a lot of rock stars, both new and old, have been bringing up the topic and sometimes proliferating their disdain for cancel culture, or as they call it, censorship. Ironically enough, even some of them that propagated this cancel culture in the first place. If you really think about it, censorship or cancel culture as they like to call it now, stifles the creative process. Censorship in turn stifles creative and entrepreneurial impulses and it denies the people that want to or might have even benefited from those ideas and creations. So of course, I was inspired to do a video featuring and mentioning some rock and punk rockers this week. Some of these folks I've admired and been inspired by because they are some of the very artists who paved the way in free speech and expression using our God-given right to free speech that is also guaranteed by our country's constitution. But before I get into all of that, please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. A donation would be the ultimate, and I'm still sending out unique gifts for your donations. I'm also posting on other platforms due to the censorship that has been happening here. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Rock and roll. The creations, the songs, the poems of the rebel and nonconformist. The grinding of guitars and the up-tempo and heartbeat that separates common people from the establishment. Even if just for the moment the music is playing. Ever since Elvis shook his hips to the beat, little Richard bawled Miss Molly and the Beatles invaded us with a new kind of music that entices folks to go crazy in public, the establishment has been trying to silence those that would practice the art of rock and roll. Little Richard even originally dubbed rockin' and rolling as a slang expression for sexual intercourse in which some detractors of the genre used in order to justify their requests for censorship of rock and roll. Some of the more recent battles, like in the 80s when MTV came out, exposed surprisingly enough that most rockers, which are also musicians that wrote and performed their own music, were not just some dumb, wild, uneducated Neanderthal types that made loud noises and got all the girls. The PMRC at the time tried to portray them all as degenerates or bad examples for children due to their sometimes very illicit and explicit lyrics of sex, drugs, death, occultisms, etc., including their album art. With more and more artists freely expressing themselves in more and more explicit ways with minimal restrictions, a small group of politically connected women decided to group together and do their part to protect children from the allegedly harmful music of the 1980s. Ah, album art was a beautiful thing, and sometimes the only reason to buy a record album. Oh, that and that one great song, but don't get me distracted. However, looking back at it all, it did seem like the establishment had finally found a way to profit from those creating the music under which they assumed protection of the First Amendment. It was extortion, pure and simple. The PMRC were not just an independent committee of concerned parents. They were familiarly connected to the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives, whose approval the RIAA desperately needed to pass the Home Audio Recording Act known as H.R. 2911 in the House of Representatives and as the Matthias Bill in the Senate, and better known as the Blank Tape Tax. If approved, this bill would add a tax of one cent per minute on all blank audio cassette tapes sold, 
and an additional 5 to 25 percent tax on all home tape recorders in order to help alleviate the massive financial losses created by music pirating and home recording. Due to the nature of this bill, the proceeds from the tax would be distributed to the record manufacturers and record publishers and would not benefit the artists in any way. As it happened, the head of the committee which would oversee the legislation was Senator Strom Thurmond, whose wife, Nancy Janice Moore, was an affiliate of the PMRC. Zappa suggested that Gordikov felt that he had to agree to what he dubbed the conception of an appeasement sticker in order to appease the Washington wives and their husbands so that they would in turn grant record labels the blank tape tax at the expense of performers. In all of this, the main concern has been the business agenda of the major labels versus the egos and sexual neuroses of these vigilant ladies. From the reports, interviews, hearings, and eventually legislation of the rating system that was imposed upon production companies and in progression to the artists themselves, these folks made it clear that they essentially pass off their own responsibility of watching over their own children and what they watch and hear to the artists who would now have to watch their mouths and actions or suffer some kind of governmental consequences. Which ultimately led to the fine line that they drew between censorship and appropriate for audiences. As Zappa explained it earlier, these mandates were actually inevitable from the start of the PMRC because of who the leaders of the movement were. They claimed that they wanted it to be mandated to be voluntary but the way they worded it and just kept repeating the lyrics and showing the arts as examples all the time started to seem like they were being sadomasochistic about what they were professing. They were literally like robots when it came to quoting all of these lyrics when they were making these arguments. And it's like, well, okay, give us an ex enough examples, but what is it that bothers you about these things? If they're inappropriate for your children, then it's your right to go ahead and not allow your children to listen. It is not your right to take that away from any artist or anyone that would actually create that or anyone else that would be able to or allowed, I hate that word, to listen. People needed to make up their own minds and they also needed to be able to parent their own children. It was like they hated it, but they couldn't stop talking about it. All to get the government to take care of it. To protect our own children from material that we believe may be inappropriate for them. I want people to know what's going on. And we have asked the music industry, please rate these albums so we can protect our young children from trash like this. In fact, Al Gore, the husband of the initiator of the whole movement, Tipper Gore, actually asked this of Dee Snyder. I suppose the lyrics aren't uh, printed. Then what choice does a parent have? To sit down and listen to every song on the album? Well, if they're really concerned about it, I think that they have to. Do you think that's so reasonable to uh, expect parents to do that? Being a parent isn't a reasonable thing. Now, why wouldn't that be the case? Who can decide better for one's own kids? And if you care about your kids and what happens to them that much, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, if it looks like censorship and it smells like censorship, it is censorship, no matter whose wife is talking about it, it's censorship. These days, committees aren't needed to censor or cancel someone. All it takes is some Twitter or internet mob, and the corporations just seem to roll for some reason. I sure wish they could set their sights on canceling things like child trafficking or taxes, but don't get me distracted. The twits and grammars these days seem to have the control over morality and acceptable behavior, speech, and thought. These nameless, faceless keyboard warriors have seized control enough to where, in some cases, people have taken their own lives. And that's just not right. Why are we bowing down to these trolls? I tend to call them all trolls. I mean, look at what 4chan did to the OK hand signal. These trolls are literally trying to make the internet real life, and it is sickening, scary, and evil. And since some of them have developed bots and AI to do the work for them, endless. In an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, Glenn Danzig mostly talks about his latest horror movie. But when asked about some of his music, let me read to you what he said. Warning, explicit language ahead. 
Rolling Stone asks, What's the story behind Last Caress? That obviously wasn't about a movie. He answers, It's just a crazy ass song. We would do things just to piss people off. Rolling Stone goes on to ask, So, was that song just let me think of the most effed up things I can think of? Danzig answers, Part of it, yeah. Like, F everybody, F you, F you, F you, F you, F the world. And that was pretty much the attitude. It was like, F your system and F all this bullshit. It was something else. I don't think people will ever see anything like it again. There won't be any new bands coming out like that. Now, they will immediately get cancelled. Rolling Stone goes on to ask, well, what do you mean? He answers, people don't understand because everything's so cancel culture, woke BS nowadays. But you could never have the punk explosion nowadays because of cancel culture and the woke BS. You could never have it. It would never have happened. We're lucky it happened when it did because it'll never happen again. You won't have any of those kinds of bands ever again. Everyone's so uptight and PC. It's just like, okay, whatever. From an article in the music publication Blabbermouth.net, featured an interview with JJ French, none other than of Twisted Sister fame, one of the original Filthy 15. He says this. Cancel culture is not a healthy thing. Cancel culture is not healthy because it just depends on who decides to do the canceling. So if they like Twisted Sister, we don't get canceled. We are okay. But if they hate Twisted Sister and they cancel us, it's not okay. So therefore, it's not okay just to do it randomly. It's a personal choice. If you don't want to buy something by somebody, don't buy it. But for the media to withhold it is opening up a can of worms that is almost impossible to put back in the jar. Who doesn't remember Roger Daltrey? See what I did there? Here's what he had to say about it in an interview with Zane Lowe on Apple Music. It's almost like now we should turn the whole thing lot off. <laughs> go back to newsprint. Go, that, go back to word of mouth and, and, uh, and re start to read books again. And then we might, we might get somewhere because it's becoming so absurd now with, with AI doing all the tricks it can do, and the woke generation. It's terrifying the, the, the miserable world they're going to create for themselves. I mean, anyone who's lived a life and you see what they're doing, you just know that it's a route to nowhere, especially when you've lived through the periods of a, of a life that we, we've had the privilege to. I mean, we've had the golden era. There's no doubt about that. But we came out of a war. We came out of a leveled society, completely flattened bomb sites and everything. And we, we built that. We've been through socialist governments. We've seen the communist system fail in, in, in the Soviet Union. They've been in, the, been in those communist countries while they were communists. I've seen how <laughs> wonderful, really, it was. <laughs> Johnny Rotten has been talking about this new woke fad since he became a citizen in 2013. In his latest interview with The Times, as portrayed by foxnews.com, he stated this. However, he sees a singular threat to the America he's come to love over the years, and that's modern political activism and wokeness, which he believes gets too much attention in both media and colleges. Quote, These people aren't really genuinely disenfranchised at all. They just view themselves as special. It's selfishness, and in that respect, it's divisive and can only lead to trouble. I can't believe that TV stations give some of these lunatics the space. Where is this moral majority nonsense coming from when they're basically the ones doing all the wrong for being so bloody judgmental and vicious against anybody that doesn't go with the current popular opinion? Even this artist who probably helped in propagating some of the misinformation that fuels censorship and cancellations, is now feeling the pinch of stifled creativity and being able to make a living at it because of the nameless, faceless mobs on Twitter. His Twitter feed reads, 
from the bottom up, saw people on here having a discussion about how tired they were of reviewing boring stuff, i.e. TV and film. He goes on to say, we're getting boring stuff and not even experimental mistakes because people are afraid of getting canceled. So they feel like they can only experiment with aesthetic. Also, because some of them know they're not that good. And you know, his work is anything but boring. In fact, I found his This Is America video kind of scary. Now, I had seen clips of it while pundits talked about it, but until I researched this person and wanted to show you who he is, I never saw the whole video. Mainstream to me has gotten pretty free, if you ask me. So why are other forms of art and other artists considered too much of one thing or another to express themselves as they wish as well? I consider myself a creative, and it pains me deeply to see other creatives being stifled due to the mainstream mania. And it scares me that I may not be able to express myself freely as an artist as well. My interpretation of it is like being bound and gagged in your creative mind. Your body explodes because you can't get the art out in the way that you interpret it in your mind. A lot of creators have mental illnesses as well. I believe that censorship of that creativity actually could make that worse. It's just my opinion. The whole purpose of freedom is to create what you want. And if you don't like what others create, don't look at their creations. Do your own creating or watch and appreciate those that you do like. No one is forcing you to look at things and hear things that you don't want to see and hear. Why would you force others to not create the things they do want others to choose to see? It isn't anyone's right to take the ability of others to experience what may not be right for them. I believe that is why we encounter so many Karens now. They have decided that they don't like something and then they decide that they're going to play mom or dad to the rest of us and try to protect us from said thing that they find offensive. Well, I for one have never and will never conform to the ideas and whims of others. I don't care how much authority you think you have. When you start professing that you're better than anyone else, because that's what this is, that's what most of the call-outs about folks are anyway, this is what I hear. I have more authority than you, so you have to do as I say or else. Or else what? My great-grandmother always gave me a great piece of advice. And it's a simple solution to not dealing with folks that you don't like or don't want to be associated with. And it's to simply stay away from them. And it actually makes sense. I could never figure out why if someone was so visceral in their dislike or offense towards someone, would they put themselves through that kind of torture? Unless of course they love the drama. And of course that's a different story in itself. As early as the 1600s, Voltaire said, the right to free speech is more important than the content of the speech. Personally, I like what Dr. Seuss said about your free speech. Quote, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Even John Lennon had something to say about free speech and I quote, being honest might not get you a lot of friends, but it will get you the right ones. And frankly, who needs the wrong friends? They might just try to censor you. I do hope you enjoyed my video this week. If you'd like for me to continue doing my work, please make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. A donation would be the ultimate, and I'm still sending out unique gifts for your donations. I'm also posting on other platforms due to the censorship that has been happening here. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time... Thank you.